Hello. What is up? What is up, everybody? I switched it to the wrong scene because it's been so damn long since I've done this. It's been like two weeks. Um, look at Matt. He looks very disapproved of my of my face right now. I'm sorry. God. I'm still learning here. Okay. I'm not you have one job. I have one. You have one job. You screwed it up. Uh, so I guess just probably go back to the opening now. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 14 of The Edge. Uh, I am Sean Clark. As you already know, today's episode we'll be covering Mythic Raiding, uh, how you can structure it, how Blizzard's improving on their dungeons, and what we uh, dislike and like about what's going on with them, past, present, and potentially future. And it's already April Fools. Can you believe it? I was gonna do something clever with the uh, the backdrop of everything, but I decided that uh, it's too much work, and I want to do that. So, um, but before you get into all of that, I gotta introduce these guys. I'm gonna introduce Matt first. He uh, was a contributing author, uh, WoW Insider for a very long time. Also now for Bliss Pro, and also co-host of this show, Mr. Matt Kiss. What's up, dude? Hey. 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 What's up? What's up? Oh, usual. You? Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I'm running this show, and uh, I'm taking a break from playing Diablo 3. So. <laughs> We're not allowed yeah, to talk about it as much as we want to. No. There very how, how uh, nice of you to take a break from farming to do a show yeah well that's what i do see I and do. that's that all that face over there you know her too she's from blues bro she's on the show she does stuff this out Merling. what's up dude how are you i'm good but i'm hearing an echo hearing someone an needs echo. to turn up their that stream i'm sorry i apologize oh no oh okay now we're gonna give him the disapproving look so the, the, the head sorry. shake I'm kind of feeling a little confused because <laughs> that's all I'm hearing. You feeling better now? Did you forget to mute your Twitch? Oh, I can hear it now too. Oh, weird. Oh well. Well, there you go. Episode 14. We still don't know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> After we start. Yeah, I'm good. I don't hear anything. Alex, are you good? Yeah. I can see it now. Yeah, someone's is, someone's is still either that or it's a sound coming from someone else's headset and or audio speaker. I turned all mine down. Alex, you good? I <laughs> I think the echo is gone. No, still there. You serious? Well, yep. I I don't think I think you're the only one that can hear it. Did you mute your Twitch? I've muted it, Twitch, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, we're going to go move forward anyways. Um, you can hear us twice. Just try not to, uh, try to, not to go insane. Video, we, in the video, I can edit all that stuff out. It's just not a big deal. Um, there we go, it's gone. Woo! Okay, there you go. I don't know what changed. <laughs> literally, literally nothing changed on, on my end, so I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, um... First thing I probably want to talk about is April Fool's stuff that, that Blizzard has released. Uh, there's a lot to talk about for the April Fool's jokes. Um, they always go really crazy with it. Um, from everything from literally a wall of patch notes to, um, you know, introducing fighting games and, um, you know, just everything all across their entire, uh, their entire uh, genre of games. They're just introducing things and stuff. So do, we, we, I don't even know where you guys want to start on this. There's just so much to talk about. Uh, what do you guys think? Where do you want to start? Oh, let's start with evil patch notes. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. I was even contemplating we should. Uh... Pardon? I hope we're not going to go through all of them. There's a lot. No, of them. no, no, we're not going to go through all of them. Uh, I was actually, like, for a brief second, like, considering that we should actually cover this like a proper April Fool's joke. But no, I think I've had <laughs> enough of April Fool's jokes for one day. So. It's just, no. Although, um, I really love them, and my absolute favorite must be the amount healed by healing spheres has been increased by a thousand percent, because run over the healing spheres! God's sake! No one That's cares about the healing spheres. They're like, they're not directly in front of me, so therefore I don't want to do anything. <laughs> Yeah, this this is my eternal lament as a Mistweaver monk. 
It is, um, there are some really, really funny things, though. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, um, what, uh, we, uh, checking out the ones at MMO Champ. There's also some at Blues Pro, so you can check out both of those. Whatever your flavor is, you know, I'm not gonna be biased. Go to Blues Pro. There you go. I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna say that either way. Yeah, whatever. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, you can check out, I mean, obviously, you know, if you, you're gonna play your favorite, you're gonna check out your favorite class first, like you always do in all the patch notes, that's something we've already talked about before. Um, so for the rogue ones, you know, I play a rogue, some are really funny, assassination is not known as stabby, um, they changed the name of the rogue to blush because of people can't spell rogue after almost 11 years of playing the game. Oosh. Um, but I mean, there are some really, really funny, Oosh. silly things too, like, uh, flying mounts can now be used in the Pandaria raids and just silly things like that. Blizzard never lets us down, uh, every year they always come out with some really funny things, entertaining things, and... And there's always those, like, I don't know if it's still, like, an elaborate troll or, or what, but there's, like, every year I feel like there's still a handful of people that are just, like, this is going to be a joke, right? Like, this this cannot be, you're not serious, are you? It happens every year. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Just, there, just I've had what. many people say, like, you know, <laughs> well, maybe not Bliss, um, Blizzard stuff particularly, but some other sites have been ha doing some pretty elaborate schemes as well, like which the is, onion, uh, you know? Yeah, I like but I was thinking, like you know, um, Wowhead did something with you know you you were so you were being um, supposed to be able to buy skins for your your, your characters, <laughs> which isn't entirely implausible, you know, but uh, yeah, with Heroes of the Storm um, having that exact feature, but uh, I think it's uh, some ways off. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you can go check out all the all the things, the funny stuff that they had put on. Uh, like I said, as, as Matt is so adamantly putting it, to go over to Blizz Pro and check them go out. To Blizz Pro. Go to Blizz Pro. Tell him Matt sent you. Matt sent you. you can write <laughs> yeah. in the comment. Maybe he'll even give you that cool Canada hoodie that he's wearing. <laughs> he has to win this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the contents. Yeah. Mm. Oof. Must be from Canada and or live near Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the disclaimer. Exactly. <laughs> and you must buy him lunch. Um, but the big, the biggest couple of big things I want to talk about, the two big things I want to talk about are the mythic rating in the dungeons, um, that's going to be coming up in Warlords. Um, uh, there's been a couple of, um, uh, tweets and, um, things, information flowing around about, um, the, compos the compositions of, of the 20 man mythic rating and, and, um, you know, a lot of people gearing towards, okay, how are we going to get ready for this? Um, you know, it's really coming down to, to kind of crunch time now because people, this is freak out time, and this is this is the time when I mean, you know, Matt. I mean, people are they're burned out. There's this is the end of the expansion. They're still going to try to keep going, but at the same time, it's they're they're going. They want to keep going, but they don't. Um, and now you have all these distractions coming out between Hearthstone and uh, and Diablo three and all this other stuff. Heroes, so, what, Heroes what of the Storm. Yeah. yeah. So 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 what do we? Where do you go from here? We panic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Advice is just um, panic. <laughs> basically. Um, I mean, at this point of an expansion, you're always going to get, you know, the burnouts, the people that cancel their subscription, and they're just like, hey guys, I'm going to be back for the expansion. They might be, they might not be. It's really yeah, hard to tell. Um, and, uh, I mean, if you're in a guild like, like you, Matt, which is, you know, trying to do 25 man, well, 20, yeah, <laughs> but like... heroic pro progressing, uh, progression rating, you kind of, you need backups. You can't just, you know, hope that everyone will turn up. Yep. We are relying on our backups and we're, we are also heavily relying on our backups, backups, like friends of friends to come in and fill for us on certain days and certain nights now. It's really, really agonizing. Like I've lost maybe, geez, maybe five or six people over the past month. And these are really well-geared people that have been around for like you know several months that have been farming and learning these fights with us too. And they've gotten you know we've equipped them and and with the the gear drops. Yeah. And now we've basically come across that statistic, that mathematical wall where if you don't hit this DPS benchmark, you don't kill mm -hmm. the boss within the enrage timer. We're like we're hitting that again, even though before we were easily beating it by like you know, minutes, seconds, or whatever. So it's just been extremely frustrating to me. Yeah, I was just going to say, that must be frustrating. 
absolutely frustrating. Well, this is work. kind of a slippery slope, though, too, because I've gone through the same type of environment where you're at the end of the expansion, you've rated this stuff for so long, the yeah. the beta is nowhere uh, in, in sight, at least from from Blizzard's uh, released information. I mean, you kind of figure it's at least another month, maybe two down the road, um, and that's just the start of the beta. So. Yeah. Um, you know, these people start getting frustrated, and you can get frustrated for a lot of different reasons. You're getting frustrated because maybe you're not 12 and 12 yet. Maybe you want to make that initial, that, that last surge to get to complete your heroic rating, but guess what? Your main DPS just left. And then yeah. you got to gear someone else up. But then guess what? The other two or three people that don't have time or they're just ready for that last push, they are like, well, I'm not going to waste a couple weeks gearing this person up. Now I'm going to leave too. If that person, exactly. all it takes is that one person. Once that first person leaves, everyone else follows suit. But then you, you really figure out. Too. You know who's going to stay and who's not. Um, so I guess along those lines, where it's where we're going to talk about mythic rating road going from 25 to 20. Um, how does that tie in? I mean, where where do you go with these people that you geared up and that play well and that you have good chemistry with because you've played with for so long, but now they're abandoning you? Uh, you know, maybe six, seven months out from the new the new expansion. You know, what happens when they come back? You know, what then? Well, when they come back, it, you tell them. Hey, I don't know if I have a spot for you. It's just you got to be frank. You got to be honest about it because I know that as a GM, I can't guarantee a player a spot when they return because I don't know if they're going to be back. I have to assume that they're not going to be back unless they're actually going to be, unless I know for sure that they'll be here, mm -hmm. right? But it, it's hard for anyone to say yeah. that because, you know, there could be school, life changes, new job, whatever, right. you know, and I don't want to put my, my, uh, my chips into that. In case I bet incorrectly, in which case I shoot myself in the foot. I'd rather hedge my bets and just, you know, nothing else I can really do. Just keep trying to recruit people, keep trying to get more people in, and plug away at it, right? It's yeah, I just kind of wish these guys stuck around for even a couple more weeks and at least just to get that garage kill because it's, yeah. it's just that feeling of leaving a job half done. Sure. Because I know, Definitely. I mean, I, I can, like I said, I've been in that exact same situation where you are pushing those, hard, those heroics. You're so close. You're like two, maybe three bosses away. Yeah. And then you just, right. you know. And, and, and the thing is that... You three more hours or whatever worth yeah. of attempts. You would have had it. But people, that's what people understand, especially, uh, you know, people that aren't in GM positions that, they, guess what? The GM is, if not as much, but probably more so burned out than you are. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yes. So they want to take that break as well. So once yeah. you get that kill, I mean, unless you're really, really, really serious about pushing and getting that, you know, whether it's the heirloom gear or any of that kind of stuff, like, you're going to be taking a break. You may go down to, what, rating one day a week, something like that. I mean, it's yeah. that's it. I mean, you just kind of want to say you did it just to do it. And, you know, I, right. I cleared the hard mode progression when it was current content, and, and that's it. You know, I mean, you want to take the break, too, and, and, and kind of step away from the game maybe for a little bit. Maybe not completely, but just, you know, take that breather, get that fresh air, and get re-energized re and get ready for the expansion. Um, and of course, this is always a great time to farm up materials and, and uh, look for new players that could potentially be coming in, or maybe server transferring, uh, guild merging, uh, cleaning out the roster. I mean, this is when the housework starts to get done, right? At, towards the beginning yeah. and at the end of expansion. In the middle, you're kind of too focused on you know, you know, what's in front of you, like this progression or getting the raid makeup ready or whatever. Um, so when it's become to 20-man mythic, um, it's going to be interesting to see where people go, who they cut, why they cut them, and uh, who, how many people are going to be moving around, um, how many server transfers there's going to be, or if Blizzard is going to uh, maybe make it so... Um, you know, the server transfers maybe at a reduced price for the beginning of the expansion. Uh, mm. I mean, who knows? But we don't know. Yeah. Um, they have had that. Like, yeah. Before, They've done it before. They? Yeah. I uh, seem to recall I removed, removed <laughs> transferred my druid to a server and then never played her and transferred her back. <laughs> That's become quite expensive. <laughs> but, you know, she, she got to be a troll for a little while. Now she's a night elf again. <laughs> well, I mean, when you when you get uh, putting these groups together, it's twenty man now, so that's kind of a. I I, I like that how? number. I think twenty five was kind of a weird number, if you ask me personally. I like the just the rounded out, like you know, ten, twenty. 20. I like right. that because um, you you're basically doubling a ten man essentially. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think it's the perfect amount of people though. I don't. I think for, I remember when forty man rating forty man was just too much. 
um, because then you know five people would leave, and then when those five people came back, two more people left. You know, the yeah. AFK, and I had to go pee, Salty and I had to let the dog uh, out. My wife aggro. It's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, so I think twenty is good. Um, yeah. <laughs> but with the, with the composition, it looks like you're going to be looking at about five healers, two tanks, and a DPS with an off tank spec. So, um, where does that come into play? I mean, actually, Watcher did confirm that there was uh, a tweet not too long ago that was directed mm -hmm. to him. Uh, asking him, you know, how many healers a mythic group should expect to have on hand for warlords, and the average is about is going to be five, mm -hmm. but that can fluctuate between four to six, so yeah, around yeah. that number. So it's like twenty twenty five percent of your raid uh, makeup should be uh, healers, right? Give or take, right. And you got to uh, figure that. Thanks. Out. Yeah, thanks. You we definitely want two, right? Because there's always going to be that, like you know, um, some type of sundering or some kind of like, you know, you get yeah. you get a, the stacks, you get a, you get a let them reset, and you know, there's there's always there's forever and a day going to be that kind of, uh, that's just kind of how the healer healer tank DPS uh, makeup kind of works. So yeah. you can never go through current progressive rating with just one tank ever. Um, it's no, and I think the third I tank, think though. that they want to um, also move away from like, you know. The later Siege of Ogremont progression, where you know they've had these really people, you know, remove like a bunch of healers and one tanking stuff, everything to get through like a raid, raid boss. And I think they want to move away from that, so they kind of keep the composition of the group more stable, mm -hmm. so it doesn't fluctuate as much. Because right. um, I know that uh, I um, affinity. Uh, Mr. Weaver Monk for Blood Legion wrote uh, on uh, the forums that he was very concerned that, you know, um, healers that didn't have absorbs were going to get cut from, <laughs> from progression ratings. Right. Um, obviously, you know, Blizzard's already gone out with uh, some of the healing changes, which means that they are um, making absorbs less um, strong in in raiding environments but it's still like a valid concern like everyone knows the key to to kind of downing a boss drop a healer <laughs> that's like happens a lot of time and so it's uh it's not so fun all the time to have to just like okay bye <laughs> i'll just sit here then have well fun. i mean what's it what's it come down to i mean how do you cut these people is it raid makeup? Is it is it you know raid mechanics? Is it the fight mechanics? Is it attitude? Is it attendance? Is it what is it? You know, would you rather take a more consistent bad player that at least shows up and has good attitude and tries and doesn't bitch, or would you rather have a really great player that's inconsistent on showing up, you know that will complain if he doesn't get every piece of gear that drops? The consistent. I would go bad to the players. consistent one. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, you can improve them. Ish, right? Maybe, but I mean, I, I think a lot of it depends on what you what you're trying to go for as a guild. Because uh, yeah. I've been in guilds where they rather have the snobby elitist because they know they mm -hmm. know their stuff and they can get it done, and they're they're right. kind of gonna weed out the weakest players. You know, they're they're gonna form around them. Like, you, you, I mean, you've I don't know if you've ever guys have ever been in a guild like that, but you just get invent and you're just intimidated the whole time you're in there because if you feel like you say the one wrong thing, these guys are just gonna They'll jump, jump right over all over you. Yeah, they're gonna be like you idiot and you don't know what you're talking about get out of our raid you stupid you know and i've been a part of guilds like that and wow. it's, it's really i'm telling you like if you ask any high-end raider or people that that really have to compete for their spots on their raid team like it's it's a it's a tough environment yeah so it's survival um, defense, it, it really is yeah um so i think a lot of it comes down to personal preferences as, as a as a person that runs your guild and i think it also comes down to okay what's your goal you know, what, what do you want out of this raid tier? What do you want out of raiding? Do you want to make friends and, and, and progress at a casual level and, and improve players and make them better? Or do you want to just, you know, I want to be server first or I want to be the one of the best guilds on the server? Um, because right. you can be that. But I'm going to tell you, almost every single person in, yeah, in your raid group, is you're not going to enjoy being around them because they're just, it's like, um, Someone compared it once I saw in the forums to like a uh, a football team, like NFL football team. Like everyone is has that alpha male personality on the team. They think oh they're goodness. the best because you know in high school they were the best, in college they were the best, you know. And then suddenly they're in a room full of fifty other guys that also think that they're the best. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work that way. Um, a lot of times it doesn't work that way. So getting the chemistry is is just as important. I feel like as is learning the mechanics of the fight. Um, so. 
I think that for me personally, if I was putting a rate team together, I was choosing who's going to go, who is going to, you know, who's going to stay and who's going to go. A lot of it comes down to chemistry, you know, my personal yep. relationship with these people, um, because it's that's at the end of the day, that's what's important. At the end of the day, there's people that I rated with years and years ago that I still talk to today, because they just we had good chemistry, we made we became good friends, and and we shared similar interests. Versus there's people I rated with that I wouldn't want to talk to if you paid me. So. Uh, just because they're just those kind of people, I just. I I'd don't. talk to them if they paid me. I would not. I but would not. Um, here's some people I. <laughs> this is one, this is one kid <laughs> yeah, who at first kidding. was kind of funny. Like every time we'd wipe and he'd play his saxophone uh, over a vent, and then it got really annoying after a while. Oh my goodness! We were doing that, hardcore. that would get tired, like. Yeah. Like we were, we were doing a heroic uh, uh, firelands, and uh, it was it was terrible. So, anyways, um, speaking of. Um, of that kind of stuff, like dungeons. I, I, we want to talk a little bit about dungeons, uh, and I know that they have. There has been um, uh, some tweets going out about uh, fixing certain aspects of dungeons that people find quite annoying. Um, that there are things that could be improved upon. I mean, uh, I know that Matt, Matt, and I uh, were talking before we went live, and we said, you know, uh, talking about the things we're going to talk about in the show. And we said, well, you know, dungeons are really only used in the beginning. Yeah, the beginning expansion, you know, or leveling up your alts. You know, you you run your dungeon, you get enough gear, and you're done. And Let's actually reiterate this. So that's more for the raiders, right, the ones is. that want to progress more. Sure. Um, yes. But, yes. But how can yeah, that let's not alienate be... our entire viewership? But how, how, can, how can but how can this get better? You know, how how can well, they improve on their dungeon system? I mean, look uh, at look at Diablo. As much as I hate to take them as an example, look how they made the adventure mode better. I mean, look how they, 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 they put it in because it was just like you were doing it normally. Like, you go and you farm and you kill everything, but they just made it so it's a lot more fun now. Okay, so what can WoW do for their dungeons in that regard where it's like, wow, this is just, it's the same. I'm doing the same kind of thing, but it's just a lot better. Well, first of all, like, this whole topic came from someone telling, you know, watch a, um, you know, there needs to be a blacklisting feature for dungeons, sure, just I like there that. are for battlegrounds. Um, which I, you know, it's not a bad idea um, because there are certain dungeons that you grow really, really tired of. Like sure. in Mist of Pandaria, there are a few that I could mention. First of all, I mean, if you look at um, Stormstar Brewery and Temple of the Jade Serpent, they're quite a, kind of fun dungeons, but they're the only two you can run for several levels whilst leveling up so you must have done them like a thousand times that could be nice to get rid of uh, but mostly it's the drawn out rp se um, segments mm -hmm. or mechanics that you can't skip those are the ones that people just hate like they made a poll and you know the siege of niatsu temple won by like a landslide just because um of the second boss where you, you just have to stand there and wait for the waves of ads to come. Yeah. yeah. And due to this, they actually added an, a hot fix, which meant that it, on challenge mode, there's a gong that you can right. um, you use can hit, to speed, speed up. up the waves. That's the same thing. And Halls that's going to go into um, the normal and heroics, which is really nice. I, I think Love that it. interaction between like the community and the developers is really amazing. Like, they just did it. Blizzard doesn't listen to us. Yeah. Yeah, Stupid exactly. <laughs> I dare you suck the life out of me. You build me up to, you never listen to us. tear me down. Yeah. So see, I thought that was really, uh, really amazing. Something I would uh, like to see is something that Diablo does. And I think this is what, as much as I can want, don't want to keep referencing it, I've been playing it so much it's hard not to. It's just that it's, it's that you never know what you're going to get kind of thing. Um, you never know what's going to drop. You never know, you know, what's, what's coming next. So here's the good and the bad with this idea. What I would like to see is the option to be able to, to blacklist the certain dungeons you don't want, right? But mm -hmm. be able to get any piece of gear that drop out of all of those dungeons out of any dungeon that you run, okay? Um, or doing something like more like a wish list. Like you can set maybe four or five items down, and then you can, if you, if you kill a boss, you have a chance at that additional loot and or gold. Kind of like how they do the bonus, bonus roll system in, in LFR. Um, there's, two, there's, there's one problem and there's one good and one bad with this. The one good is that, um, you know, it's going to give you the chance to run the dungeons you like. 
Um, it's going to give you a chance to not be forced into running a certain dungeon that you hate because you need that one piece of gear to put you into raiding content. Okay. The bad part of this is that people are going to exploit this. They're going to find the fastest dungeon. They're going to find what you know is going to take yeah. them five minutes rather than twenty, and they're going to yep. run it over and over and over and over and over. So if Blizzard can somehow get a hold on that and say, okay, let's make each dungeon unique, but make it run the same way. So you know, have each one take say fifteen minutes each. Um, and there's no way to run any faster. Literally say, okay, this is what each one takes, <laughs> but we're going to make it so you know you can get any piece of gear and that it will drop into any of these from running any dungeon that you choose. I think that that's a better way to do it. Maybe. I mean, there are problems with that kind of stance as well. I mean, there's because always yeah. I mean, there's always gonna how, be something. How how are you gonna feel that you get better? Like if you. You can't do anything to speed up the process, it's, it's even about, if you have better gear. See, I think it's about getting better. Throw more gongs. <laughs> yeah, yeah not, exactly. It's, it's not about getting gongs. better. It's Blizzard. <laughs> Blizzard doesn't like it when you don't see the content that they put the work into. Yeah, that's, that's what true. they don't that's, like. Exactly. That's true. Um, that's true. And that's but... what they that's what they did with Diablo, and that's what they did with they tried to do with Cataclysm when they redid the whole old world. And I said, hey, you know, go back and check it out. Who did that? Like no one. Why would I? That's I not think. current content. You know what I mean? When you're bored, you fly around or whatever. Okay, yeah, cool. But, like, there was no, like, real engagement there. There was no, like, you have to go and do these things in the, in the, re, re, the, the whole revisited world. Like, no. I went to Twilight Highlands and I leveled 85. You know, like, I no, I went to <laughs> Bashir. Or no, I went to, you know what I mean? I went to Hyjal because I had to go to Hyjal. Um, so forced interaction is something that Blizzard likes to do, but they don't want to make you feel forced into it. Um, yeah. And Blizzard has d done the same thing with Diablo, where they say, okay, adventure mode, we're going to make it so you know you get these extra items for completing these bounties, but we're f even th we're forcing you into the world, even though you've already been in, say, Act 3 and 4 and 2 a zillion times, but now it feels a lot better because you actually feel like there's a purpose for being there. Um, I don't know about you, but like the thing that annoys me about the dungeons and system I hate is that for some reason like it's just karma or, or some kind of Murphy's Law where if I run, it's always the worst dungeon I have to run. It's the longest one and the most annoying. And it's that one piece of gear I need at the very end, and it never drops. And that's the one thing I need so it puts my eye level in so I can start raiding. Every time, yeah. every expansion. So I wish that something like that would change. Like I said, whether it's a, whether it's like a wish list or whether it's a, you know random things can drop. Um, uh, you know, or all pieces of gear can drop from any dungeon kind of thing, um, or maybe some kind of bonus system where it's like, you know, if you run a random dungeon, say, five times, you get a token. And if you get maybe five tokens, you could buy that item. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, th at least you're getting rewarded for the effort, you know? Like, you're, you're putting in... Oh, I think... I mean, yeah, you get gold and you get, like, a random item out of a satchel, but, like, that's not the thing I need. Didn't we call it justice points? Yeah, we used to. Yeah. Yeah, we used to. Or oh, valor points. Yeah. Valor you, points. Um, I, I had this a lengthy discussion with a friend, actually, because he's just like, he thinks uh, you should be able to run dungeons, get valor points of the equivalent, and be able to buy gear so he can be competitive in a raid team should he sure. just want to raid every now and then. Mm -hmm. Whereas I just like, n no, I think dungeons should be gear you up so you can get into the raid and then yep. you have to raid to get the gear but he doesn't agree with me well, that's but I, i'm sure there are many people that would want it that way well the reason um, why i mentioned this is because they are getting rid of that type of system like a justice point system in warlords so you're not going to be able to run these heroics to get these points in order to get better gear that you get out of the dungeons anyways like you have to run the dungeons to get the dungeon gear in order to get your eye level high enough in order to get in the raids so you're getting mm. rid of that whole system so that's what I'm saying, like, why not make it so my effort is actually worth it by actually feeling like, even though, oh my god, i got to run this instance even though I've run it 25 times, if I run this one more time and I complete it, I can get that item I've been waiting to get about time. Rather than, man, I hope that this item drops, or oh man, I'm going to leave this queue because this isn't the one I wanted, or, you know, whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, I, see, I see what you mean. They just I just get... hope that they don't lock too much stuff behind reputation like they did in Mr. Bandara. Well, because... they're getting rid of daily, oh, so. Holy crap, yes. I agree. Reputation yeah, but like if you look at Throne of Thunder, for example, they had, a... you could buy loads of stuff for Valor Points, mm -hmm. but it would, was locked behind reputation, and the reputation you only got by, um, you yeah, know, but... doing the, the raid and daily raid. And when you, did, yeah. when you did a lot of raid, you already got the gear from like the whatever boss yeah. drops. You didn't yeah. have to buy it anymore. 
But no, I mean, exactly. So that wasn't really a successful well, there's kind no, of There's going to be no more dailies. So what's interesting to see is how they are going to make rewards, the reward system work. I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of the big part of it is going to be the garrison um, and your work on the garrison. It's mm -hmm. As much as they say it's not going to be essential, it's not going to be required for gear, for uh, light, uh, items that you're going to need for progressive rating, that's total BS. We all know it. Um, they are going to make it somehow directly connected to if you build your garrison to this point, you will get X item. You're going to get a trinket, you're going to get something, enchantment, whatever. Um, it will give you some kind of booster bonus. There's no way around I have it. To, yeah. If they're not, no, get, if they're not doing dailies, is, what I else kind would of, be? If we're just talking about, like, if we don't think about changing, you know, the 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 setting as it is now. Like, I quite like the way they did it in Cataclysm where they introduced the Sandalari dungeons um, after the first raid tier, uh, but it was slightly lower item level than the raid tier, but it was still good enough to motivate people to do the dungeons. Whereas See, later on when they did the Twilight dungeons, the item level in there was the same as in Firelands. So why would you do... Fire. I don't know. See, like I, I thought those instances after the raids were just kind of thrown in. I thought that felt weird. That felt weird to me. Really, I yeah. love those. Because I mean, well, even not, though not even though the they were ones, fun, the troll ones. I mean, they were fun, but it's just like it just felt weird. Like, why am I raiding and I'm fighting all these raid bosses and doing all this work, and then I can just do dungeons and get better gear? It was well, it meant was to be like a catch-up mechanic. mechanic. It, it was, was. It was. That's was, exactly what it was. But I'm just saying, it felt it weird. Level. Yeah. It did feel like was, this isn't right. That's what not how it's associated with dungeon. Three five three or something, and the the dun the raid was three five nine. I think. I don't remember. Off the top yes, of my head. that would have been entry level cataclysm raids. Yeah. I yeah. I can't remember the exact number, but oh. that sounds right. But it's, it's still a good way to get like your hands on weapons and trinkets that you know, if not you know best in slot, definitely something that would help you compete a little bit. You know, so you I don't, don't have to lose. I, I'm all, I'm see, I'm still all about you know you getting your own gear, you earning it, um, and I'm not saying that like, you know, Blizzard doesn't have to do this kind of like give me, give me gear kind of thing, but I do feel like you need to put a little effort into it, and that's what I'm saying with like the system, like the one I gave just for an example, like running so many and either getting a token and or being mm -hmm. able to choose your reward kind of thing. At least you're putting the effort in. Um, oh yeah. And it's, I don't know, like. The, uh, the the ketchup gear and that kind of stuff it just feels weird to me like it feels and it's kind of an insult to people that raid a lot and to put that work in and that hard work in towards the beginning especially in the contents you're raiding all blues and greens and then suddenly you know Joe Schmo comes back to WoW raids that dungeon a couple times and is caught up to you that's that's a little weird to me but that's what they're catering to you know that's what they that's what they want they want those people that play casually to stay and giving them more money give me your money. There it is. Yeah. It comes yeah. Down to. I just, I don't know. I mean, I it's, can't. It's I, a, do you, I mean, can you think of any other way that the dungeon system can be improved? I mean, that could be better to make it more worth it. To make it so maybe when you're at cap, it makes it worth it. Maybe about a chance for uh, rare drops for your garrison, or um, you know, something like maybe some kind of cool transmog item, or. Well, that's. Challenge mode. I mean, that's the. I mean, that's the challenge mode, yeah. right? But I mean, like, I mean, unique to just the dungeons. That way, it gives you, a, a, it gives you a reason to run the dungeons for other people that are gearing up. Yeah. No, so I can like, totally see that. Yeah. Um, I just. I mean, that's the thing. The, it needs to be worth it. Like, people it needs, put in a lot of effort to getting stuff that won't help them at all. Right. And that's <laughs> like transmogs and and battle pets and mounts. And they spend all this time and money and resources on cross realm servers and and connecting the dungeons and that way the queue times get lower. And the reason why the queue times were low in the first place is because no one gave a damn once they had the gear. They were done. They were so burnt out of running those same five or six dungeons a hundred times that you they would not set foot back in that dungeon. They didn't care what was in there. Yep, that's me. I'm that person. Yeah, and I'm that. Hey, I'm on, let's let's, let's be real here though. Like once you already hit the cap and you've already gotten like raid level gear there is absolutely no reason for you to go back to doing five man stuff it's not it's not meant for us anymore it's not a challenge because like I, I don't know about you but i have like a finite amount of time in this game mm -hmm. and most of that time for me is spent tackling those big bad burly bosses or whatever that drop the really cool stuff you know because yeah, i'm yeah. 
that's what I want to do. I want to kill things with 19, 24 other people or, or whatever. Right. right. That's how I want to spend my time. I do not want to spend my – I do not want an incentive to go back into five man for myself personally because now I've got two things i got to do. A, I got to farm or do or, or progress on the, the raids, but now I have to go back to doing five five man stuff. It doesn't make sense. It's like a distraction of my time. I appreciate it as an alternative, as an alternative activity, but I would not want that as my primary means right. of production. But that's Sorry. what I mean. Like I wouldn't want to make it a primary thing. I'd want to make it right. alternative. Like you know, this is for some kind of vanity items or some kind of whatever. You know. I mean, but there's enough of that in the in the current system though, because sometimes you can get like a mount drop or like a a pet, right, or something like vanity stuff. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but what yeah, or like the time thing? run for the bear mount. Right. Yeah. But that, that was, was actually, cool, and a lot of people like that. did that. That's exactly. And what that I'm was saying. like a, a challenge as well. But like it was a yeah. nice achievement. But this but is different. I was wanted. To, yeah. No, I I get it. Yeah. Um, um, but I didn't mean the challenge points. I meant in the in Zulaman for the bear mount. But never mind. Yes, the no, time no, no, I know what you mean. I'm just saying, like, yeah. no, what I'm saying is like the challenge mode versus. Not everyone that's gonna run dungeons is gonna run challenge modes. Like me personally, no challenge modes I've oh. run ever in my life. Like one. You know why? Because I don't care. I don't care about <laughs> challenge modes. Okay. No, I, just, I know. Oh. So like, but, but, but what I'm saying is, is that if you have a reason to go back into those dungeons, you're gonna help other people. And isn't that the whole point of? The game yeah isn't that the whole point of what blizzard is entailing is like helping everyone and making people better and being a part of the community so that's what i'm saying like even though challenge mode does that type of thing it has that same idea set why not take that same idea set and put it back into the regular dungeons that's not the challenge mode yeah but that's what i was saying kind of you know but... helping random people or like people you know no random people i think oh, yeah with Maybe. random people like so you'd have to queue yeah. as queue random but um, how would you guys feel about you know just the incentive to go back into the dungeons to get valor points so you can upgrade your raid gear, or do you feel you get Which, enough from the raid bosses? Yeah, I don't. I don't like that idea. I mean, just because I wouldn't want to run it again. Like for me, to, for the upgrades, it doesn't make sense for me to go back to do easier content to upgrade the gear that I'm getting from current harder content. You know? No, I think she meant like going back to get points to upgrade your current like rate. Well, gear. that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, okay. I mean, I just don't. I mean, I get it. I think it's it's an interesting idea. Um, I just don't know about like it's like I'm doing my rating and then I have to go back to do dungeons, which is way easier when we can fly through it to upgrade that same gear that I was getting out of doing harder raids. You know, right, like I think right. there need to be something more attached to it. Like, I don't know. Like, I think that that is a good start, but I think it need to be something else with it. I don't know what though. It, it's, I don't know. It has to be something else. Maybe you get like a certain item. Maybe like a certain, like I said, a certain item will drop, and then you can use that to either enchant your item to say, I'm going to give it more health or more strength or more agility kind of thing. I just see that they could add like battle pets like they've done to old raids. I'm sure people would run dungeons there. Vanity items, yeah. Yeah, the vanity yeah. items is what gets people's attention. People love mounts, they love the shiny things, you know, and that is. That is what yeah. will get people back. It in doesn't there. have to be like, but you have you to know, do it so it's yeah. not in a guild format. Maybe you and a friend, two people. If you have any more than two, those items won't drop. You want to make it random so you're helping other people. That's the point. Okay, you mean like that? Yeah, I could see that. Because if you run in it's a guild, it's just like if you. But it's just like if you queue up for like um, tank or healing satchel, you have to be alone to get it. Right. Yes. And I like that idea. Because yeah, it's trying to encourage more random, sure. more more people in the pool or whatever it is. Actually, um, Jen had a good point in the uh, in the chat there. She mentioned about a catch a mechanic for a legendary cloak for alts. That's actually not a bad idea. I would definitely go into that more if it would help kind of accelerate the process yes. for. Oh my goodness! Uh, yes. For the uh, legendary cloak or whatever the new legendary system is going to be in the next expansion. Like there this. Is. Yeah. Th like there's still. Yeah. Three, you'd still need 3,000 Valor points in the quest line at the moment. Which is yes, and we're capped at 1,000 points a week, which is Exactly. Just, yeah. if, oh at least God. they remove the cap. Like, either remove the whole thing about getting 3,000 Valor points, because that's like three weeks you just have to wait. Well, there you go. Remember, you used to be 6,000. When there's no other... Comp well, why not, why it was 6,000 to begin with, then just, they left yeah. it See, three. we just answered our own discussion point right there. There it is. 
Okay, you get to select the thing you run the random dungeon to do. So you run the random dungeon with two less people. What do you want to go for? Do you want to go for vanity items? Do you want to go for valor for this? Do you want to go for increased reputation or whatever? Do you want to go? You get to select the thing that upon completion you get the bonus of. And then mm -hmm. you get so many of those per week. So you can try for three vanity items or four vanity items a week. I mean, obviously, they're not going to make it limitless because that's just how Blizzard runs. They need you to keep coming back every week. But if you can select those things, say you're going to say, hey, I'm going to do my extra rep, my three three times extra rep or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Like, now I'm going to go for my vanity items and now I'm going to go for my whatever. That's still going to run it 12 to 16 times a week if you want, if you choose. And it's still helping other people, but not making it limitless so you can try to get it all in the first month or whatever. You can, I mean, making selecting your own options and making it your choice is going to make it a lot better because not everyone plays the game the same. No, definitely. But it's just, um, I don't know. I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Never mind. We it's were talking about there. legendary clothes, and understand. then you started talking about vanity items. I don't know. <laughs> I, I checked the box that will give my old the legendary cloak. <laughs> check, check. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if that's what it takes, <laughs> I mean, it. then that's that's fine. You know, I don't yeah. think that there's anything wrong with that. I think that people, again, people play the game because they play for different reasons. And I think that being able to choose the reason why you do that, and that will make the dungeon experience better. If they spend so much time trying to make these dungeons, you know, entertaining, and, and you know, they put a lot of work into them, then why not make it work for them? You know, put put a little extra something there to help us out, uh, to make it so yeah. your work doesn't go unappreciated, and to make it so you're helping everyone else out at the same time while still gaining benefits for yourself. That's literally mm -hmm. the whole thing that Blizzard does. Um, I mean, that's their whole idea behind <laughs> a lot of decisions like, that they make. I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna like, I get, I know what you're saying, but on the other hand, I'm like, I really, really don't want to do five man. So, so I'm not, I'm not looking for any kind of incentive to but do any But that's the thing. It's like you don't man. have to. Yeah, it's, that's the thing. You right. don't have that's to. What I mean. but no, no, listen, I, I don't listen, listen, want Sean. to have to. It there is, be... there is a vanity pet on the line. Of course, he has to. Yeah, see, well, <laughs> but that's that's the whole point. Is I can sit there and say, well, you don't have to, but does this pet make me do more damage? <laughs> if no, skip. Yeah, see, and that's the thing. You don't, and that's, but that's the thing. It's like for me, if I can find some awesome mount that no one else has, or it's a low drop rate, like I'm gonna go for that, because that's what I like to do. I like to collect rare mounts and that kind of thing. I mean, that's my yeah. thing. So, um, just to show it off. <laughs> so every, that's what I mean. It's perfect. Everyone plays the game differently. She's gonna go for the cloak. You're gonna go for something else that's gonna help you out later with whatever. And I'm gonna go for something that's really rare. I mean, that's that's. Well, Matt's not gonna go for anything. No, I'm just gonna when chill. And... First, he just he doesn't want any incentive to do dungeons. He just <laughs> I, do the dungeons, be... go into the raids. End of story. I could be farming legendaries in Diablo instead of doing five minutes. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, Blizzard gives you that choice too. <laughs> <laughs> and while you you're farming legendaries, you can do what I do. Note, by the way? And while you're farming <laughs> legendaries, play Hearthstone. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the patch note uh, with pal if you have Reaper of Souls installed on your computer, your paladin <laughs> will stand staring at the Crusader longingly. <laughs> Crusader is <laughs> kind of badass, actually. I wish my paladin looked like him. <laughs> The Crusaders like, what, are fun. My Crusader just won't die. Like I've increased, I'm level 15, and I've increased like difficulty several times just to see if something will happen. It doesn't. They're very, they're very cooldown dependent. Awesome. That's the only thing. Later yeah. on. They're yeah. Very very cooldown dependent. It's like barbarians, but that is a whole nother show and topic. So yes. there yeah. you go, um, guys. If you tuned in, uh, thank you very much for coming and checking us out tonight. Um, we are. Pretty much kind of cut it here because I know Rat Matt has to go raid. Um, so make sure to follow us at edge at underscore blizzpro.tv. It's our uh, Twitter, which we are terrible at tweeting from, but just pretend to follow us there. Anyways, if you have any questions, you can email us at edge at blizzpro.com. Make sure to follow all of our Twitters. Boom, boom, boom. They're all on the screen there. And you guys got anything before mm -hmm. I play music and cue us out? No. Now. Nope. Yeah, now. good. Good discussion. Canada. It was a good talk, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you and liked it, make sure Sweden. to send the link up to the YouTube channel, so your friends, neighbors, websites, whatever you want to do. We always, always appreciate the feedback and the help, so please, guys, uh, uh, we, we always enjoy the support. So thank you very much. Um, we will see you next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, and whatever time it is, wherever you're from. Um, we will tweet up all that information we'll be covering. I'm trying to talk to you guys so I get mad out of here. But hey, guys, have a good night.